Hello. Today, we're ready to start a painting project. Before I get into the details about this project, let's talk about our goals for this painting. This painting is going to be all about value. Value is lights and darks, shadows and highlights. We're going to be using black paint to create shadows that fade in, and also white paint to create highlights. When you're practicing painting highlights and shadows, there are three subjects that you have to master. A so we will be using these three shapes as the inspiration for our painting, but also making them more interesting and creative as we go along. On the whiteboard, I'm going to sketch out some ideas for how the painting can come together. These are possible subjects, arrangements of subjects. Keep in mind that even though I'm working on a whiteboard, I'm still imagining this as a future painting. The first layer of this painting is going to be inspired by the cube, and there are two options for how you could show a three-dimensional flat-sided surface in your painting. Here's option one. These lines represent the background of a painting that is inside of a room. You've got two walls and a floor. When you have this interior three-dimensional space, this gives you a great opportunity to have a dark wall, a light wall, maybe some medium values on the floor, and then you could fill this room up with all kinds of different subjects. So this is option one for the background of your painting, the inside of an empty room. Option two for your background is to have a room with some sort of three-dimensional cube, table, box, or rectangular prism resting on the floor. Could look something like this. Represent a table or a bench inside of a room, and it's going to give you a great opportunity to have a dark side, a medium side, and a light side to a three dimensional subject. Now, if you choose to do um, this as your background, you'll also have to think about your wall and your floor as well. For the second part of the painting, we need a subject that is cylindrical. One of the best cylindrical subjects is actually your arm. And you can see how as light hits it, you get a highlight and a shadow. So an arm will be the perfect subject to practice painting highlights and shadows on a cylinder. Now you have to figure out how you want your arm to be placed on this background. I'm imagining an up-close arm that's cropped so we don't have to worry about painting the rest of a character's body. For example, the arm could come from this side here There are lots of other ways the arm could be positioned in your painting. Let me show you some other options. And because the main reason we're using the arm is just to have a cylinder, there's no reason you couldn't paint a leg instead. So now we've planned out some possible backgrounds that use a three-dimensional flat surface shape. We planned out a subject that is cylindrical, the arms and the legs. And now we need to figure out a way to use the sphere. Quite well to the painting that we've imagined so far because we have these random hands just sticking out into a room and what are they doing well they could be shooting a basketball they could be grabbing for an apple they could be hovering over a magical spherical orb let's add some spheres into the planning sketch and see how it looks
can imagine the subjects in our painting and how they're going to be arranged. We're ready to choose a color and start painting. There are 12 colors you can choose from. Red, red orange, orange, yellow orange, yellow, yellow green, green, blue green, blue, blue purple, purple, and red purple. Those are all the colors on the 12 part color wheel. For my painting, I've chosen to go with the color red orange. So I'm gonna start by taking a few dips of red, rolling my brush to get that extra paint off of it, and then a couple dips of yellow. Mixing that together until I see it start to turn orangey a little bit. And this red orange color will be my main color for the painting. Using just a little bit of paint on my brush, I'm going to sketch out the angles for my room. Two diagonal lines where the floor meets the wall and one vertical line between the two walls. If you imagine the light is coming from the left, you're gonna have a light wall on the right, a dark wall on the left, and medium on the floor. I'm gonna do the floor first. Since the floor is medium light, I'm just gonna use regular paint and water to make it thin since this is the background. And paint a thin wash of that red orange color all the way across the floor of my painting. Once the floor is done, I'm going to paint the light wall by mixing white with my red orange paint to make a nice light peachy color. And then paint that all across the right wall. And then for the dark wall, I'm gonna mix some black paint with the red orange. Remember not to add too much black paint or it will completely take over. And then use water and spread your dark color across the dark wall in your room. And you will have completed a room with a light wall, a dark wall, and medium values on the floor. We'll do the next step tomorrow. Let's get started.